we're going to have a look at stationary points. Stationary points is a concept that we have covered in previous courses. So it's a bit of a reminder about what they are now. And then we're going to have a look at how to find stationary points using some of the differential calculus rules that we have learned uh, this year. So just a reminder that a stationary point, if you draw a graph, the stationary point is uh, where the gradient of that graph is flat, i.e. zero. Um, and what that means in effect is that if we have a function f, then we find the derivative f dash of x, and that would be the gradient function. And so if we take f dash of x equal to zero and solve, then we will find the x coordinates of the stationary points. Then we can use the x coordinates of the stationary points, substitute them into the original function to find the y coordinates, and there's your turning points. Remember, turning points, or stationary points, I should say, are an x, y coordinate pair. It's not just an x value. Okay, so as you can see there, I've listed the three types of stationary points that uh, we can uh, have. We've got uh, maxima, minima, and points of inflection. And you can see I've got in brackets there local because technically speaking, um, you know, a graph might have a, um, a maximum which is high over a domain, which is higher than um, a stationary point, but we call it a local maximum and similar for a local minimum. Okay, and there are points of inflection that aren't stationary as well, just to round all that off. So let's get stuck into some examples. So example one here, we've got f of x equal to sine of x over the domain x from zero to two pi, and we're gonna find the stationary points of those particular, um, a particular domain. So here we go, step one, of course, as usual, find the derivative, but this is a function we haven't tackled before this year, is it? But the derivative of sine x, look at your info sheet if you can't remember, is cosine of x, same domain of course. Um, and we set the derivative equal to zero to find the stationary point. So we effectively have cos of x is equal to zero. It might just change color from now on. So um, if I draw my unit circle, where is cosine of x equal to zero? Remembering that cosine is the x coordinate. We're kind of looking along here, aren't we, for the x coordinates um, being zero. So we're going to have one x coordinate here and one x coordinate here between zero and two pi. So we can state pretty quickly that x is equal to pi on two, that's this one here, um, or three pi on two, which is this one here. This is where the this is where the coordinates on the unit circle for cosine is zero. Okay, so that's the x that's the x values done. Now I'm going to substitute them in to work out the y coordinates. So uh, f of pi on 2 is equal to the sine of pi on 2. Lucky we've still got our handy diagram over here. So we can see that this is where we've got pi, uh, pi, pi on 2. The sine of pi on 2, given this is a unit line, is just 1. So we've got equals 1. And so there's our first coordinate pair, pi on 2, comma 1. And then we have f of 3 pi on 2. And that would be the sine of 3 pi on 2 and 3 pi on 2 would be here, negative 1. So our second coordinate pair is 3 pi on 2, comma, negative 1. And that's basically it. We've got our two stationary points. We haven't classified them as maximum or minimum. We'll do that in a separate video. But we do have our stationary points between 0 and 2 pi. How can I make this more difficult? Make this expression more tricky. So um, make this expression more tricky. You'll get a more tricky derivative you then set it equal to zero, and then there might be more trig equation solving required in order to solve it. But that's the bare bones of it. The rest of it is just, can you remember your stuff from the trig unit? As you can see, this differential calculus unit requires you to remember and utilize a whole bunch of skills from a whole bunch of different um, areas. Okay, number example two, find the stationary points of y equals x times x squared minus three. What would your approach to this be? Maybe pause the video and have a think about it. We've got the product of two things here, this one here and this one here. So we should use the product rule, right? No, do not use the product rule because it is far simpler if we just go y is equal to x cubed minus 3x, i.e. we are expanding. And then I'm going to find the derivative to y by the x is equal to 3x squared minus 3, like so, and set that equal to 0 for stationary points. And now we figure it out. 3x squared is equal to 3 x squared is equal to 1, and therefore x equals plus or minus 1. So that's the x coordinates, but remember our job is not done until we work out the y coordinate as well. So back to our original function, 
substitute each of those numbers in. So minus 1 cubed minus 3 times minus 1 is equal to negative 1 plus 3, which is equal to 2. So that's negative 1, 2, and I'll just do the rest over here. Or y is equal to 1 cubed minus 3 times 1, which is equal to negative 2. So the second coordinate would be 1, negative 2. There you go, two stationary points, and they're the, co they're the um, coordinate pairs for them. Okay, example 3, f of x equals e to the 2x plus 1. Same process, find the derivative first, f dash of x is equal to, now we've got a very, very simple use of the composite um, or chain rule function here. So we've got e to the power of a function 2x. So we go e to the 2x, because the derivative of e to the something is e to the something. And then we find the derivative of 2x, which is 2, and then the derivative of 1 is 0, so we don't bother writing that down. I.e., we've got 2e to the 2x equal to 0. Divide both sides by 2 to get e to the 2x equals 0. And then we can't do anything, right? doesn't matter what value uh, we put in for x, positive, negative, or 0. E to, the e to it is got not going to be a 0. It's not going to equal 0. There's nothing we can do there. So what does that mean? That means it does not exist. There are no turning points for f of x equals e to the 2x plus 1. does not exist. No turning points.